Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. In this segment, we'll be looking at figures of speech. Now, we can't really give a full definition or properly pinpoint what figures of speech are. But I would like to put it this way. Figures of speech, they are the ingredients that make up writing in literature. There is no way we can write poetry, prose and drama beautifully without making use of these. There are so many figures of speech. They are numerous. But we will just look at these popular types and make examples. First off, we'll be looking at simile. Of course, simile is a comparison of two things or two ideas using like or as. For example, she is as black as charcoal. Now, take note of the use of that word as. I will make use of the word as or like to show comparison. She's as black as shackle. That is one. Another example of a simile when you say he struts about or he walks about like a peacock. Now you are comparing he, that is a character, and peacock. The manner of walking is being compared. The way he walks is like that of a peacock. She talks like a parrot. She, her manner of speech, is like a parrot. Next one, we'll be looking at metaphor. What is a metaphor? A metaphor is simply a direct uh, reference or a comparison of two things or two ideas. Now, in simile, we use like or as to compare two ideas or two things but metaphor is just a direct reference for example is it of you to say she's as dark as charcoal you say she's charcoal or she's a piece of charcoal or is it of you to say he walks like a peacock you just say he's a peacock or you say he's a lion um, when you say um, Ronaldo is a legend in football you know, that is a direct comparison. Another example is personification. A personification is when you use a human attribute on an inanimate object. For example, when you say the sky is weeping. Now, we are not trying to say that um, the sky is a human, but we use that attribute, that action, weeping. To explain uh, or try to describe the atmosphere of the weather the sky is weeping is actually portraying rain um, when you say the trees clapped their hands that is another example of personification given uh, human attributes to an inanimate object apostrophe now apostrophe and personification it's kind of similar but in the case of apostrophe, you are calling on to something. You are calling on to something that is not with you, but as though as if it were with you. For example, you hear people, we actually make use of apostrophes all the time, but we don't know. For example, when you say, oh, exam, oh, waek, oh, jam, why have you... Okay, another example of a figure of speech is the apostrophe. Now, the apostrophe and personification, they are kind of similar, but apostrophe is different in the sense that it's an instance where a writer or a speaker makes a direct address to a thing or an abstraction, something that is abstract. You make reference or you address something that is abstract, that is not there with you, as if it's there, as if it's present with you. Um, for example, when you say death, be not proud. Now, you are not saying that death is abstract. It's an abstract idea. But when you say death, be not proud, the, the speaker was trying to 
um, bring death closer as if death was in the room um a, a popular poem says africa my africa you know you try to personalize africa as a construct as a concept that is as if it's right there with you in the room another kind of a figure of speech we'll be looking at is the apostrophe now the apostrophe and the personification they are a little bit similar but now let's look at it critically um, the term apostrophe refers to an instance in which the writer or the speaker makes a direct address to something that is abstract, as if it were present with him. It addresses an absent person, generally. For example, when you say, Africa, my Africa. Now, you are referring to Africa as if Africa is right here, as if Africa is a person or a thing that is right here with you in this room but Africa is abstract for example when you also make reference to death when you say death be not proud you are also using an apostrophe or when you say oh why oh why oh jam why have you done this to me that is a person who is uh, lamenting over a loss or a failure in an exam and says oh why you know, you're making reference to Waek as if Waek is a human right here with you in this room. So you can see why it's a little bit kind of similar to personification. Now, next up, we'll be looking at oxymoron. Now, oxymoron is the use of two contrasting words uh, to lay emphasis on an idea, two contrasting words to emphasize a thing. For example, when you say, We all heard. The bitter sweet news about her marriage now you use the word bitter and sweet to express something bitter sweet news now you're not necessarily saying that the marriage was sweet or the marriage was bitter but it's trying to express an idea that it was just in between uh, when you say something like um, the news about her pregnancy is now an open secret now open secret that is um, maybe it was a secret before, but the news filtered to everyone's ears, so it's now an open secret. The next time you use this expression that says pretty bad, he was in a pretty bad shape, pretty bad, that is an oxymoron. And next up, we'll be looking at euphemism. And euphemism actually expresses something unpleasant, but in a mild manner. For example, um, instead of saying the man has died, you can actually say he has kicked the bucket. That is a mild way of saying it. Or he has joined his ancestors. Or he has passed on. So that is a mild way of expressing death. Instead of it saying the man has died. Uh, some people may want to say, um, express nakedness. Uh, maybe instead of it to say I am nude, you know, the person may want to say, I am in my bathing suit, you know. That does not necessarily give a direct imagery of nudity, okay. So that is just an example of euphemism. Using something pleasant to express an unpleasant idea. Next off, we'll be looking at a paradox. A paradox is a statement which seems to be self-contradictory. Or absurd but it turns out to be heavy with meaning for example when you say the child is the father of the man and when you look at that statement critically you are wondering how can a child be the father of a man but by the time you look at that statement deeply you find out that with time the child began to take responsibilities for the father you know so now you now find out that the child is the father of the man as a statement it may be sound contradictory but looking at it it has a deep meaning another example cowards die many times before their death that is another example of a paradox another one those who crave for peace must first prepare for war a paradox now onomatopoeia now this is very simple to identify Onomatopoeia simply refers to words that depict sounds. For example, can you hear the tick-tock of the clock? That term, tick-tock, tick-tock. 
it's referring to a sound that portrays the sound of a clock. We had the cockatoo, the cockatoo of the hen. Cockatoo is a sound that a hen makes. The roaring of the lion, splashing of water, crashing of waves. Now these are numerous examples of onomatopoeia. Okay, so this one, the sinedoki, is also an example of a figure of speech. A sinedoki actually uses a part to represent a whole, or a whole to represent a part. For example, whenever you use the expression, many hands on deck, many hands on deck. Now you are using the part of the body, hand, to refer to humans or people actually working on something. Now, um, when you say, the woman is poor and she has so many mouths to feed. Now, mouths is used to represent children. Many mouths to feed, you know, is referring to the many children, the several children that she has. Um, another example is um, when you say all eyes on me, all eyes turn to look at me when I stepped into the room. That is also an example. Okay, so here, the sinedoki is another example of a figure of speech. Sinedoki is that um, literary device that makes use of a part to represent a whole or a whole to represent a part. For example, we actually use sinedokis a lot, but sometimes we may not be consciously aware. For example, when you say many hands on deck or I need all hands to be on deck. Now you're using the part hand to represent people actually working on something. Another example is the woman is so poor and she has many mouths to feed. That term many mouths refers to the children, many children or several children that she has. Um, another example, immediately I walked into the class, all eyes turned to look at me. Now we use the part eyes to represent maybe students or people in the class. All eyes turned to look at me. Another example is um, a pan. Uh, a pan is simply play on words. Um, it's a comic way of using words. To okay, another example. P-U-N, pan. A pan is simply a play on words. It's actually a comical way of using words that have um, the same sounds uh, but different spellings to play. For example, when you say seven days without water makes one week. You know, the normal saying is seven days makes one week. But uh, the pun expression here is seven days without water makes one week. W-E-A-K. Okay, so that is just an example. Um, another one. Uh, the pastor prayed on the lady until she became poor. Now, they use the um, P-R-U-A-Y was substituted with P-R-E-Y. So the pastor prayed on the lady until she became poor. That is, um, the pastor, you know, took money from her and all of that. So when you use two words, um, expressions that sound alike, words especially, to play on them for a comic effect, you are making use of pun. Now, sarcasm. A sarcasm is a form of verbal irony that insults a person with an insincere praise. You can see that definition. The definition itself is sarcasm. It's a form of criticism in which disapproval is expressed. Um, it's an undisguised kind of anger. It could be a joke. Um, its sole purpose is to mock or punish. For example, if um, you are watching the television and um, in an international football engagement, the national team is about to score, and uh, while the nation is gla glued to the TV set, um, there is a power outage, and somebody shouts, Nigeria, we heal thee. Now, that context is sarcasm, okay? Um, it's a kind of joke, it's a barb. Okay, um, if you are showing your friend maybe a new article of clothing and um, you are showing your friend your new dress 
and your friend says ah, it's enough we've seen enough sarcasm is a form of verbal irony that insults a person it's a kind of undisguised um, praise or joke it could be an expression of anger that is meant to hurt a person or meant to mock a person for example uh, maybe you are watching um, their fans uh, watching an international football match and all of a sudden there is a power outage and somebody says Nigeria we hail thee you know why is that expression hail you know the person is just making a barb B-A-R-B -B, uh, on the country's situation that after all at that time there is not supposed to be a power outage so Nigeria we hail thee you know another example is maybe you are showing your friend a new article of clothing that you're putting on and your friend says okay it's enough we've seen enough of your dressing it's enough you know so that is um, the use of sarcasm a kind of cruel joke that is meant to maybe hurt a person or mock a person Another example is metonymy. Metonymy is when you use an object or a symbol associated with an office, okay, to refer to a position. For example, um, when you say, I am yet to read one Shakespeare to the end. I am yet to read one Shakespeare to the end. Now, when you say Shakespeare in that context, you are referring to the works. Of Shakespeare okay uh, when you say uh, the crown has refused to recognize the new prime minister the crown has refused to recognize the new prime minister now the crown in this context is referring to the royal family so when you use an object or a symbol to refer to a staff or office you are making use of metonymy the next one is Lytotis. It's pronounced lytotis. Now, lytotis is the use of a negative statement. Lytotis is the use of a negative statement to emphasize a positive meaning. Now, it usually uh, makes use of the word not. Not. Now, when you put not, it's expected that you're about to say something negative, but there's a way you link the word not to something positive. For example, when you say you're not looking bad you know normally you will say you're looking beautiful or you look fine but when you say you are not looking bad okay you use the word not the negative to um, or sharing something positive uh, when you say this is not the worst thing that has happened to you you are also making use of the term light -hotis. like I said earlier there are so many numerous examples of figures of speech but for now we just have to look at um, the popular ones the most used ones that are also relevant to literary appreciation for exams at this point in time some questions will also pop up on your screen so as to determine how much you have learned thank you